In this video, I'm going to go over a definite example of machine learning. And in this scenario, we're going to try to analyze the flow rate and pressure of an oil and gas well. As these pressures change, we can detect things like the well loading up or scaling or salting or different issues. And I think you'll be surprised at actually how easy machine learning really is. I'll show you a trend so you kind of understand the data visually and then of course the spreadsheet that we're just going to load in we're going to train the machine and we're going to see how accurate it can get at predicting. So an oil and gas well it's not just pop a hole in the ground and gas comes out although that does is kind of how it works at first as the well ages um, it gets harder and harder to lift lift liquids. Here's the wellhead this is illustrating the casing. It's the big pipe that goes all the way down to the bottom of the hole. And then these are formations where you perforate and gas and either water or oil can come in. Water and oil weighs a lot. So if you just drilled this well and tried to produce it like this, the liquid level would rise to a point where there's just so much weight on the formation that nothing comes out. You can turn on the valve, nothing, nothing happens. Of course, I'm generalizing here, and I'm not an engineer, so I apologize for inaccuracies. But what they do is they use a tubing string. So it's a smaller pipe that goes to the bottom. That way liquid comes out to the bottom. And the tubing works exactly like a straw. So if you have a big glass um, and you had a really big straw, it wouldn't be as easy to get the liquid out as if you had a smaller size straw and then it's pretty easy to lift the liquid. All the pressure pushes the, the water fluids down, they just come right up. So when you first drill a well, this isn't a problem. There's lots of pressure, lift isn't an issue. But as the well ages, these pressures decline and um, <clears throat> what can happen is if the velocity of the gas and fluid coming up is slows to a point where the liquid actually starts falling out and it's like it's not going fast enough it just starts accumulating and this water level starts rising so I'll show you in a clear uh, example here in a second uh, these are things that you can visually identify on a trend um, but we're going to apply it to machine learning and we're going to see how well it does at uh, identifying these issues. Now this is just one of many possible issues. There's lots of different scenarios that the data can point to and if you try to train your machine to pick out these anomalies and alert you quickly to them, um, it can improve efficiencies. Alright, so I'm going to scribble real quick the data that we're going to get. Uh, the gas is flowing up and out, so we have a flow rate. Let's say it's averaging about 500. And then it starts dropping down to 450. Water is coming up the tubing, and the tubing is filling up with water pushing down. So tubing goes down, casing. The gas is still coming into the casing, so casing goes up. This is the pattern that the machine learning is going to look for. So let's go ahead and get started here. So we're going to log into Microsoft Azure. Um, if you don't have an account, be sure to try to uh, get a 200 bucks in free credits. The things we're doing today are really cheap. A lot of things you can actually do for free. Um, machine learning will charge you a little bit, a few pennies for uh, what it does. I've racked up about two bucks worth of charges in the last week or two, so um, it's fairly affordable. When you're setting stuff up, try to get the lowest tier or the free tier and uh, check your billing every day to make sure that uh, you didn't accidentally spin up something that's charging you ten dollars a day or something. So I'm going to do new intelligence machine learning workspace. I don't have a resource group yet, so I'm going to make one. 
pick a location. You try to cluster all of your stuff together in the same data center, but there's not a lot of choices for machine learning, so we'll just do US. Uh, I don't have a storage account yet, so... Um, So I'm going to get the cheapest one. Um, you can basically get two compute hours or a thousand transactions for free. So that's the best deal for me for sure. All right, then we wait a few minutes for this thing to deploy. And then uh, in the meantime, I strongly suggest you do a search for this or click the link down in the video description. There are five awesome videos just to get you into data science. So you can learn about the different types of uh, classifications we're looking for. So the one we're doing is a two class decision tree, um, but you can also do anomaly detection, regression, clustering, all kinds of stuff. And then here's a other uh, really good tutorial that you can just walk through and build one by scratch drag the little pieces on the table use their little data set and explains each one Let's head on over to the cortana intelligence gallery uh, this is where people can share their code and uh, do a search for oil i have the link down in the descri video description so here's my experiment We could create this from scratch, but this will get us started really fast. Here I've got some description of this project that we're going through. Um, here's a trend of the actual data. Here's the actual data set that we're going to import. It has these same time range here. So <clears throat> we're going along fine. This green is the pipeline pressure, and there was an event where high pressure reduced the uh, production and it allowed the well to start a loading up and you can see where it's oscillating here and it's uh right here is where someone probably went there and intervened and shut it in and let it build up and tried to unload it but you can see the key uh, characteristics where red is flow rate is going down black is tubing pressure going down and blue is casing pressure going up so the data set, this is the same exact data, only I've added averages. So when you pass machine learning a single row, it has everything it needs. It, it knows the current flow rate. Well, let's do it. It knows the static pressure and it knows the average. So it can tell if it's good or bad. So, And then over here on the right hand side, we actually tell it the answer for training purposes. This is what it will solve for later once we're done. You see down here, I manually entered where false, 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 so it's fine. And then true where it's loading. So let's just look at a row here where my flow rate average is clipped off here. So I can't do that one. So, so average casing pressure is 776, but our casing pressure is much higher. Our average tubing is 609, but our tubing pressure is lower. So that's kind of the pattern that it will solve for so let's go ahead and just open this in studio and it will copy this experiment to our machine learning uh, studio you can actually open this uh, and get a two week two week free trial it looks like <clears throat> so um, you can see that they're made a free trial here for you um, so you can do that in instead of doing the page subscription there we go okay so it's created this workspace for us um, we've cheated behind the scenes there's a data set and it's really really easy to upload a data set just get a spreadsheet click new and you can upload your spreadsheet then you go to your experiments, make a new experiment. We're going to go into this existing example, <clears throat> and this is where you load the data. 
we can actually just visualize this uh, data set here. So you can see, like I said, there's uh, all of our values, the average and the average tubing, then the actual tubing. And then here's our solution, and this is what we're going to solve for. It's a good idea to clean for missing data. Um, my example data set is clean, but whenever we start running this thing, if you get a uh, junk records, we want it to just be discarded. So we select the columns. So we're going to go ahead and begin with all of them. We're going to exclude static pressure because we don't care about it in this case. All right, split data. What split data does is it's going to do a 75% split. And that is so that we can train our model with 75% and then we have 25% held over for testing. And this is how we can score later to see how we did. So what I used in this uh, case was a two class boosted decision tree. I don't really know much about it or if it's the best thing for the job, but it worked pretty well. So then we do a train model and we tell it what we're training for is this loading column in the data set. So then all you got to do is click run and uh, let this guy run. So initial training took about a minute. Um, we go down here to the score. We can view the score. And here's the return data set. Um, here is the true and false that I included in the original training data set. Here is the machine learning result. And it shows you the probability. There is a 97% chance that it thinks this is going to be true. There is a uh, less than 1% chance that it thinks this one is true. So you can see it's actually pretty close. And then if we go down to the evaluation module, we can see the curve. I don't know much about this, but normally it's like a nice curve here that shows that it gets better and better as it's training. And then here's the statistics here. We get, we had 21 true positives, which is good and five failures, 75 true negatives and four failures. So our overall accuracy is 91%. So now if you want to use machine learning, all you have to do is click set up web service, a predictive web service. And essentially what this web service does is it, it puts our machine learning into production and then you can bounce data off of this web service and get your result. So we're actually pretty much gone live by now. There we go. That was a misclick. So it's doing some cool stuff here. It's doing all the work for us that needs to be done for this to work as a web service. But all we have to do is run it. So by the way, you can see we have this training experiment we can still train with. And then this one over here, the predictive one is basically our, our runtime. Um, machine learning experiment. Okay, it says it's finished. So I got to click this thing one more time. Um, you can see I deployed it again in the background here. So now our web service is live. Here is the key. So you can test it. You can actually just type in numbers here. I don't care. I'm just going to say do it. All right. So the end result is true. It's an 82% chance that it's true because the flow rate was a lot lower than the uh, average flow rate. 
So that's it. Click on this request response right here and it tells you all you really need to know. You need this key and then here's the URL you'll hit. Um, you don't have to have the details part of it. And then whenever you hit the web service, here's the data you send it. Okay, so here's another test. You can use uh, something called Telerik Fiddler. This is a free tool. Um, you can compose your uh, HTTP POST request, execute, and then go to inspectors and raw headers to see that we just got this back. It's true with an 82% probability, even though we didn't bother to give it any values. Aside from using a third party application to access uh, this machine learning web service, you can also use it from within the Azure suite. So you can use the IoT hub to stream data into uh, analytics, stream analytics, uh, which can use uh, machine learning and then export to something. Uh, I've got a video that uh, gets you pretty close on that. For a lot more information on this project, you can visit the Hackster project page 